video, we will continue to work on the wall section for structure number three, beginning with a description of the wall assembly itself. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that we have included in this wall assembly three and five eighths inch um, metal framing members. And for some instances, this can be fine, but if you are in the process of, of designing a structure like this, one thing you wanna check is the, um, the height that you can go. In this particular area of the wall section, we have a pretty high um, floor to roof dimension, like 15 and a half feet or so. And what can happen is given how thin these um, metal framing members are, they may not be able to handle the deflection that would be associated with forces that are, are going in this direction, particularly wind forces. So it may be better to go with a deeper um, member, like a four inch or perhaps even a six inch metal framing member. So again, this is something that needs to be considered when you're looking at all the, um, the limitations of a particular project that you're working on. So what I'm looking at here is, um, this is a manufacturer of, of light gauge framing. And they've provided these charts that allow you to look at um, the height limitations for um, various sizes of metal framing members. So over here on the left, we have two and a half inch members. And if we go down here, we have three and five eighths inch members, which is what we've drawn in our Revit project. The last two numbers here indicate the gauge. So as you may recall, a 20 gauge um, frame or framing member is thinner, has thinner metal than let's say a 16 gauge member. The thicker the gauge, the higher you can go with these, um, these wall assemblies. So if we are to start with that height that I just measured is about 15 and a half feet or so. And we compare it, or we look at the chart. This top row right here is um, identifying the, <clears throat> the wind pressure, wind load and spacing. So in other words, for a building that's designing, it's being designed where the wind conditions are estimated at five pounds per square foot. And if we went to 16 inch on center um, spacing for the metal framing, we could, we could meet the requirements using a 20 gauge um, metal frame. But if the wind loads are higher, we may need to go with a higher gauge component. So for example, 20 pounds per square foot, um, I can't, I can't do a wall that's as high as what we have here. I'd have to go down here to where we have um, thicker gauges. So let's see here, a 10 gauge would allow me to do, and again, there's different deflection um, uh, levels here. If we assume that L over 240 is what we're working with, um, I could do a, a 10 gauge at 16 inches on center. Um, if my wind load was 15 pounds per square foot, I could go a little higher. So basically just keep this in mind when you're getting into the, the process of, of designing framing and determining sizes of things. Okay, so we're gonna go back to um, the Revit project and we'll begin to add some notations here for this wall section. Now in our wall assembly, we have identified three quarter inch plywood sheathing. Um, and then if you were gonna use that, that's actually, it's pretty thick. We could probably go with a thinner one, but you would also be covering um, that sheathing with um, like a, a house wrap type product um, like Tyvek. Instead of doing that, we're gonna use this zip system. So this has the sheathing substrate and it's pre-covered with, um, the barrier that you need on the exterior side. So this green material is, is acting as that barrier. And then, so these arrive on the site in panels and the um, 
the joints between them are covered with a, a proprietary um, tape, like what you see here in the image. So that's what we're going to detail for this um, in our notations. Also with this wall, um, we'll be using the drained cladding principle, um, which is shown in this image here from your textbook, where you have this airspace behind the finished material that allows any water that gets through to drop to the bottom and pass out at the bottom of the wall here. So even though we're using metal framing instead of the wood studs that are here, we would use these kind of vertical spacers um, that are you know, probably located 16 inches on center or whatever the framing is so that they have a secure attachment. And then the finish goes on top of that. So here is the assembly notation, um, notations for, for our wall. So we've got, you know, I've, I'm showing a, a tongue and groove cedar siding here and just pointing to it. You're welcome to bring the profile from the previous um, structure and add it to this wall. Um, we have this airspace that's allowing the water to drain out the bottom. We've got three inches of rigid insulation. Um, these 5 8 inch zip panels, and I've included them in quotation marks because this is a proprietary product. Um, 3 and 5 8 inch steel studs at 16 inches on center. And just again, keep in mind that the whole business about determining like, well, how high can you go with these and what gauge do you need? Um, and then on the interior here, a 5 8 inch gypsum wallboard. Um, this uh, datum we can also remove. So I'm going to go to hide this element in view. Okay. And where you put these doesn't really matter because we'll be probably cropping the window to eliminate some of the, the space where there's not very many notes. 